what up y'all this is Justin me Zach here's another episode of SMTV I got my boy problem in here how you doing what's man? going on big dog good to see you how does it feel to be on the 33rd issue of SM and I'm honored just to be on the cover and be able to be a part of this type of thing you know what I'm saying like I don't take none of this shit for granted mm -hmm. and it's a lot of people that would die to be in a position to just get interviewed by a special brother like you and be a oh, part you. of this magazine so Mm -hmm. I love it. And it's been nothing but great times here. Very hospitable. It's been dope. You know what I'm mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So let's dive into your background. So you were born in West Germany. Mm -hmm. So when did your family come here to the States? Well, my mom, you know, they, you know her and my dad split up. So that's when mm -hmm. I brought my ass back. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They was young parents. I was only there for like the first year of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from here, from Germany to Compton. Mm -hmm. So how old were you when you moved to Compton? So, uh, one. One. So you one. were one years old. Yeah. That's crazy. So who were some of your first rappers you heard growing up? Uh, my mom, she would just, she would play like other shit. Like of course, you know, just being from Compton, you would hear NWA mm -hmm. and DJ Quicks and different stuff. But like In Too Deep. Oh, I appreciate you. In Too Deep, with that Straight to the Hotel song. One of my favorite rap songs ever is MC Bree, Ain't No Future In Your Front. Mm -hmm. So that. But like my influences was like Eminem, um, Wayne, Pop, mm -hmm. you know the whole NWA tree, all of that. Mm -hmm. And even now Jay Z's and you know the greats, Kanye's. Mm -hmm. That's what I was always on. So going into rap, how did you link up with Terrence Martin? That was crazy. Um, we had a mutual friend named Robert Miller, and uh, at the time when I was just getting started, you know what I mean? And um, we had a studio in a closet. <clears throat> he brought him in. <laughs> he was like, hey. My boy, he played Snoop Dogg producer. He just came in there like, hey, what's up, brother? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get the pop in and he just made a beat. Like, man, you can have that left. I was like, oh, this, this is amazing. And so I sent him the record back the next day. Mm -hmm. And we have been clicking ever since then. I was like 2003. So from there, you wrote like three tracks on Snoop's Ego Tripping, correct? Um, three on the um, American version and on the um, global version. I think it was six. Okay, what was it like producing and just working with Snoop? It was amazing. It was just like, it was like Halloween, you know what I'm saying? I got to dress up and be dog and do the mm. things that he would do and live his life and be a part of everything that I ever seen. And at the time, he was on Interscope. So this was like one of the last time of the real big budget records where mm. you can bring in all these massive producers and stuff. So I got a chance to meet a lot of people, a lot of people early, like Rihanna, she would be around and Chris and, and then quick would just walk through and then so wild. you know then Pharrell so would be it was just amazing. It's Fergie might walk in. So you gotta understand I'm straight, I'm straight off the block, like what the yeah. fuck is this? Just you know a bunch of people coming. You in. just get thrown into the wolves of all the people that you just respect. So you just mm -hmm. adjust and just get with it. Alright, so take me back to 2013. Mm -hmm. So like what is a smash hit? Yeah. You even shout out Power 106 on that. So, did you have any friends at the station, or were you just trying to get radio play, or? Nah, that was, I mean, it's the city, you know what I'm saying? Like, my thing is the music that we put out at the time, that was the only station at the time. Mm -hmm. So, if that's the only station, when we do this video, I need that station in it. Like, mm -hmm. I represent Los Angeles, Compton, you know what I'm saying, California as a whole, so my music has to reflect that, my visuals have to reflect that. So, it wasn't for, like, a politics thing. It was more so like, nah, this is LA. Roscoe's was in the video. You had E40 and Don Kennedy in the video. It was like, this is California. So that's what I want to represent. Like, I just do the music for the people. I don't take it that that deep. I gotta go make a hit. I gotta make this. This mm -hmm. has to be that. Like, I go by what the room does. Like, if I play a record right now, and I may love it, but if I look around the room and the eyes are just, that mean it's not, because I'm making it for y'all. I'm not making this for me. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta, you gotta just, that's selfish with the music. Right. So I don't marry it. Now there are times where I'm like, nah, this is it. But that's rare. Yeah. That's yeah, rare yeah, because yeah, you yeah. just never know. You just never know the temperament of the world is just different. Everything is about when you drop something, not the sound of it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Being an independent artist, did you have Diamond Lane before or after you blew up? I've been with Diamond Lane before. Like, this is not rap shit. This is not rap. So this is life. Like, nah, it was, this is family. Diamond Lane okay. was my family. We just decided to put a music group at the And then you, you started to just like be like, all right, let's make it a business. Let's make it together. It wasn't even my idea. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I was burned fast. Like, he saw what I was going through in my career as far as dealing with labels and stuff. Got it. We already was family. The whole squad, we've been around each other prior to this. That's why this could never come and break that up. Got so, it, got it. Um, we just, some homies that decided to do it together. Mm -hmm. 
change our lives for the better. Mm -hmm. So, nah, they go, they, they're here. They, mm -hmm. they was here before this. Mm -hmm. They gonna be here. They gonna be no after this, but we going out the way with this. Mm -hmm. they, go, you know, they gonna be here. How do you find yourself standing out? Not, I'm not trying to. Like, that's not my goal. My thing is when I'm in the booth or doing my music, if I'm thinking about what the other rappers are doing or why, what they're dressing or this, this and that, mm -hmm. I'm not being true to myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? I understand like the fans and the people, they're gonna pick the pockets of where they put people. You know, they got mm -hmm. YG's the blood, Kendrick's the, the, the conscience, and then mm -hmm. I'm a party. You know what I'm saying? And right, right. That's how they want to put it. But honestly, just knowing everybody, everybody got a little bit of everything in them. Mm -hmm. You know, you just gotta stand here and do your stuff and just max out in your lane. Like, looking this way keeps you from going straight. Correct, so. correct. I want to know how you felt about YG's line and Twist My Fingers when he says, the only one to make it out of Compton without Dr. Dre. What you mean when I say that? Like, how do you feel about it? Because I feel like you've made it out of Compton without Dre. I mean, you definitely did it by yourself independently. I think he was just trying to run. Yeah, just trying to blow air. I just think he's trying to rhyme. I mean, that's a that's a that's a true fake to say. You know, you I mean I don't take it as a shot. To me though, no, I just think yeah, that's yeah. he was just trying to rhyme or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But nah, I mean Dre, Dre is the hub. But that is a dope feat to say. It's a lot of people that made it out without Dre. Yeah, correct, correct. So, where are things at with you and YG? How's your relationship standing right now? It's cool. I mean, we ain't gonna shoot at each other when we see each other. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that. It's never been like that. That's the crazy thing. It's mm -hmm. just we're not finna throw a picnic together neither. Right. You know, yeah. it's, it's a respect thing. We men, I respect what he does. He obviously respects what I do because mm -hmm. we all know where each other's at. And nobody's did nothing mm -hmm. on my end either. So it's not. That's not what we're here for. Mm -hmm. I respect him as the man. I'm saying, you know what? This ain't got nothing to do with that. We all on a mission to push Compton to the top. Right. Right. And push our team to the top. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This ain't the streets. This is not the streets. Don't confuse it. Cause you really gotta deal with it in a way, different way. That's not what this is. So I just, I, I really want everybody to know, like, no, that's not. Nobody. We were just in the same place yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's not that deep. Mm -hmm. You know. What's really great, I feel like, within the last several years, the West Coast is really unifying. So mm -hmm. how do you feel about the overall state of the West Coast music? I don't know. I really, I, honestly, it's, it's all right. I don't feel like it's where it was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people are sound chasing. Yeah, that's um, true. I mean, we won with authenticity. And sometimes your wave ain't what's popping. I don't mean you leave the beach. That's not how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You do you. That means some people are just inauthentic, and that's what they got to deal with. Mm -hmm. But as far as that, nah, I feel like we're a lot stronger when we know what we're selling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not, we all, we all kind of just got popping real fast, just to keep it clean. Like it got going real quick. You know what I'm saying? And it, boom, boom, everybody was hitting me, Tiger, everybody from the Bay, all of Cali. And now we at that place where it's like, well, the South is going crazy again. They, they're, they're, Man, it's, it's going it's all bananas. Over it's all over the place. And I love that shit. But that don't mean I'm finna be hitting it, but hitting it, but hitting it. Yeah, on the triple and flow and everything. I mean, not yeah. on my shit. I get on your shit, I can fuck around with it. But nah, when I'm giving you my body of work, nigga, this is diamond line. Yeah. And I feel like once everybody gets back to that, we on. Yeah. Whatever that is, whatever you push to get to that mountaintop where you feel like, ah, do it some more, man. <laughs> we don't we don't got to go doing that cool stuff. Speaking about Diamond Lane and putting out music, yeah. so you just dropped Chachiville. Yeah. So just let me know, what's the concept behind that? Especially this being your 14th release, correct? I don't even know at this point, man. It's, <laughs> this, it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, man, with this, it was just like, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I want people to come to this world and listen to this style of music. When I say this world, I mean my world, Chachiville. Production-wise, mixing-wise, these are the 13 records that we want to give to you. Once you come in here, like I know it's a lot going on in this crazy world, let's take a break from that. Let's mm -hmm. just come here, have a couple of different soundtracks to your day. You know, it's not a themed album like that. This is just 12 records that I liked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to take it back to the fade out. I don't want to have to come. Now the skit happens and now we, right, we wake right, up. Right. No, this is just 12, this 12 good records that we enjoyed making while we was on the road. I wanted to give them to you. Definitely, definitely. I really like Melrose and I definitely like uh, Money. Because, well, Melrose, it definitely sounds like sensual. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, 
money is a lot more atmospheric. But the one I really wanted to ask about was Did It For The Culture. Uh -huh. And I just want to know your thought process behind that, because that's a hell of a title. Yeah, um, I wanted the title to be on some, I don't want to use the word, maybe, we're a little corny. Something that a lot of people are saying. Yeah. To draw you in, where you would think this would be some party record. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you the opposite of people that did it for the culture. Like, these are two people that I know mm -hmm. that were in another culture, but they had to react because of the culture they were brought into. Right, like, right. My friend, he's in jail for 55 years because he did it for the culture. You know what I'm saying? And the homegirl, she did two years because she got it with a group of people and she was doing stuff for the culture of flocking. God, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a different angle of flip on it. So um, I just remembered those stories and I wanted to do something very different over that beat. Like, I didn't want to triple time. I'm like, yeah. let me come up with something else. And it was like the story just started flying because I remember sitting there listening to my bro tell me this crazy story. And mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? We actually get ready to shoot the visual for that. And you're going to see my action. I'm going to go to the straight block where we did it. Mm -hmm. And my reaction when I'm listening to this story, like, whoa. This just happened like five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So.